Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week three of the NSTL, uh, the Diamond Conference. Now, um, this week we're up against Brandon and the Ports Meowth. Uh, Brandon's a really good friend of mine, met him in real life a couple of times, really fun guy to be around. As you may know, we've kind of got like a casual co-op going on with our Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. That's all on his channel, so I recommend you go subscribe to him if you aren't already, because that's a really good laugh doing that series. Um, but yeah, friends turning to foe this week again. It's a bit like Ben uh, in week one, playing a friend who's not too familiar with playing in league format. Um, what I will say is his team is extremely scary. Um, I'm going to have to read it because I can't remember off the top of my head. But as you can see down beneath me, um, he has got the Jirachi. The Thunderous Fairy and the Z Salamence, Suicune, Mega Ordino, Superior Incineroar, Fortress Miensha, and the meme, the god, that is Spinder. Um, so, I would actually say, out of the three teams that I've played so far, this is one of the scariest drafts, and there's so many things in his team that are threats. Um, not necessarily in our matchup, but in general, that synergize with each other incredibly well. Um, for example, Thunderous and Jirachi, obviously Thunderous covering the ground weakness Jirachi, uh, covering the ice weakness for Thunderous and the stone, stone, the rock weakness uh, as well. Um, so, you know, Suicune is just fat, Mega Rodino is just pure fat, Z Salamence is absolutely terrifying if you can get a Dragon Dance out, Superior, again, contrary Leaf Storm, you know what Superior is going to do, but you can't necessarily stop it. He's got Fortress for Hazards, he's got Incineroar with Intimidate Pressure, um, Mien Shao for some Regenerate or Reckless High Jump Kicking. Spinder's there, it's a Spinder, it Rapid Spins. Um, not entirely sure what else it can do, to be honest with you. Um, I think that's definitely more of a meme pick, but you know, outside of Spinder, all incredibly scary mods. Now, um, I'll try and remember what I thought of, sort of like team building wise, because this was uh, a team that I built quite a while ago. Um, and I don't necessarily remember all of my reasons behind the mons. Um, things that I thought definitely were going to come with Jirachi, because if you look at his team, um, he doesn't really deal with Nihilego well if he doesn't bring Jirachi. Um, but I am kind of running tech on my Nihilego to counter the potential Jirachi bring, which I'm very, you know, certain he's going to bring. Uh, Thunderous is definitely something that could come, probably will, because obviously it will deal with my Slowbro um, and my Celesteela, and with Psychic Coverage can two-shot Amoongus as well. Um, Salamence, I wasn't too sure would be coming, because I do have Celesteela, which can hard wall it, unless he's running Fire Blast. Um, Nihilego beats it kind of one-on-one. -on -one. I I am bringing Scarf, I'll go over it shortly, so if he does set up, you know, that's my go-to. Um, it struggles against Slowbro, because Slowbro's bulky and will kill with an Ice Beam. I think Slowbro even lives a plus one Z-Fly, uh, which is gross. Um, and we've also got the Mega Altaria, which deals with it quite well as well, unless it's running Iron Tail. Even then, I think we can live one at plus one with this set, but again, we'll go over that later on. So I wasn't too sure Salamence would come. It, it can still work, it's a Salamence, you know, it gets good move coverage. It can do work against any team. Um, Mega Rodina wasn't too sure. I, I do have um, Celesteela and Nihilego to deal with it. Um, so I wasn't too sure he'd bring it because both Celesteela and Nihilego could just destroy that thing in one or two hits quite easily. Could be set up fodder as well. Superior, I was actually very confident wasn't coming this game. Usually, like I just said, you know, you can spam Leaf Storm, but when you've got. Um, Amoongus that quad resists and uh, Celesteela which quad resists the Leaf Storm. Um, I think a plus two Leaf Storm doesn't even break a substitute on Celesteela, um, which is gross. Great for me, so I wasn't very, I, I wasn't thinking that Superior would be coming this week. Incineroar was definitely the scariest thing against my team. Um, not because of the Intimidate pressure or anything like that, purely because of the coverage it can run. It can destroy my defensive core entirely with its stab. Uh, obviously Amoongus and Slowbro, um, or Dino, I mean it gets like Cross Chop or Super Power or something, that'll probably take down Ordino. Originally I thought Rotom Heat would be my answer to that, um, but Choice Band Darkest Lariat does about 70% to a max defense, max HP Rotom. So that wasn't a thing, but we did sort something out for it later on. So Incineroar was my biggest fear. Fortress was a toss up in the air, I thought if it come, came, uh, it would be a like a 
hazard user because I do have I have four defog users, but most of them are kind of eh. Would you bring defog on them? Um, my best hazard removal is probably Rotom Heat, um, and Rotom Heat was definitely something that I considered for this game, and I think it's actually something Brandon heavily considered as well. Mian Chao is just Mian Chao, like I said, Reckless Life Orb, High Jump Kick do a ton to everything on my team apart from um, potentially Landorus and the, um, the what's its face, the Mega Altaria, um, which you can kind of see in my team already. And then Spinder Spinder, we're not even going to talk about. I'm not going to waste my breath on that meme of a pick. Um, so let's go over the team. I think looking at Brandon's team outside of Jirachi and Fortress, he really struggles against dragons. Like, I, I think everything is neutral if it's not weak to dragon. So Fairy Spam was pretty safe for me in this game. Um, and knowing that I had fire coverage on my team and I had uh, Landorus that could beat Jirachi one-on-one -on -one potentially, um, meant that I was quite happy bringing both my fairies this week. So, we are running Moonblast, Bug Buzz, Roost, Quib Dance. Now, uh, Moonblast is, like I said, fairy moves are quite spammable. Bug Buzz is one because I expect him to bring potentially Substitute on something like his um, Suicune, um, because it would obviously go through that. If he's Calm Mind, that's fine. If he's Substitute, he's probably not going to bring Rest. He'll bring Calm Mind and I would imagine Ice Beam and Scald, um, because otherwise, like, Amoongus would just sit there all day and have a field day. Um, I do have ways of dealing with Suicune though on this team, um, but the interesting thing is as well, like Ribombi can actually set up on Carmine Suicune as long as I don't let Car like Suicune get ahead in the race. If it's you know like one ahead, that's fine. I can just Quiver Dance with Shield Dust. I can't get burnt by School, and with Roost, I will be you know out healing his setup basically or his, his damage. Um, so it's a good setup opportunity. Again, um, Mega Rodino, depending on its move pool, could be a setup opportunity. Um, and I believe. I am not sure what else there was. The thing with Bug Buzz as well was that I can actually two shot Jirachi with it if I get the special defense drop uh, at neutral with Life Orb if he's offensive. Um, if it was Pollen Puff, I couldn't kill him. Um, I needed that special defense drop to have a chance to kill him. Obviously, if I could get some chip damage off on that Jirachi, then that would have been fine, but I couldn't run the risk. Um, but I think otherwise, the coverage there hits his team for neutral uh, all across the board, apart from Fortress. Um, but I honestly don't think Fortress would be taking a Life Orb Moonblast too well. Obviously, I wouldn't stay in because it's going to be fucking Gyro Ball as a freer switch into my Celesteel in my entire life. Um, if he does bring Fortress, yes, Vault Switch is a thing, but I think I did a calc where. Um, choice specs and fault switch is a full hit KO or something on Celestino, it's great. Um, it's more of like a late game sort of setup sweeper kind of thing going on here, but yeah, sound move for any substitutes because I feel like a lot of his mons could benefit from setting up behind substitutes, um, especially if he brings subseed. Oh, and subseed, um, snake, grass snake, it's, on, it's in front of me, superior. Uh, comes along as well, would we'll beat that one on one potentially too. Um, he might, you know, if he's not set up at that point, I could set up on that thing as well, depending on his coverage. Um, the speed EVs, I've done enough to speed creep and max speed superior. Um, because if he's scarfed, I believe I can live one, set up quiver dance, and then proceed to just, you know, clean up his team a little bit. Um, so, kind of like a late game clean up in Rebombi this week. Um, uh, quite a few things it can set up on. We'll see how it goes. I think it was the most expendable thing on my team. I'm going to be honest with you based on what I also have sort of in the rest of my mons. Next up is uh, Landorus Ferian. Um, we are bringing Earthquake, U-Turn, Stone Edge, Stealth Rock. Um, I am running Adamant, I think, because the next thing that could look at his team, his speed tiers were kind of iffy. I wasn't expecting it to be Timid Suicune, so... I didn't have to worry about that. I think the next fastest thing on his team, which doesn't outspeed me naturally, is Incineroar, which is base 60 speed. So I could run Adamant with, yeah, because Incineroar's max speed is 123 as a jolly max speed EV investment. Um, so this investment lets me outspeed a non scarf variant. Um, Intimidate is obviously really good against that Incineroar as well, it's kind of like a backup plan. 
Yachi Berry is there because either his Salamence or his Thunderous will have Ice, uh, Hidden Power Ice, potentially Mian Shao as well. That is something that I have to consider in the fight if he brings it in against me. Um, looking at his team, obviously he has got Thunderous and Salamence uh, as ground immunities. He's got Superior as well. Um, but if he does bring Superior, he's obviously got to fear the Z Fly um, and the U Turn. Um, and his two ground immunities are obviously going to. Well, I imagine Thunderous would die to a Stone Edge unless he's Charty Berry. And the Salamence will probably. would live one after Rocks and Intimidate, but it would pretty much be dead. And at that point, I would be fine. Salamence can't do much to me. Um, it's just kind of there to hit hard. It's my only physical attacker on the team this week. Um, it's something that I've noticed with my team, is, is quite good to do. Um, and obviously I do need Stealth Rocks. Looking at his team, Stealth Rocks, he's got Thunderous, Salamence, uh, and Incineroar weak to Rocks. That's three of his ten. Um, the rest, it's neutral against, other than the Fortress. Uh, no, Fortress is because it's a bug type. Um, so it's a neutral because it's steel type. So Jirachi is the only thing that's immune to it, nothing to it, resisting it. Um, but it's still incredibly useful chip damage. Um, the EVs, like I said, I, I didn't need Jolly, so I ran Max Attack Adamant, and then I ran the rest in HP for some extra bolt. Um, next up, we have got Nihilego, which is Choice Scarfed. Uh, with Special Attack Beast Boost this time. Uh, I only had to run enough speed for the Thunderous, which is base 101. So I am obviously a 103 base speed on Nihilego, so I had to run enough. I, I had four EV, uh, 8 EV spare, basically. Um, which you can see in both defences uh, and HP. Max special attack, because like I said, um, well, basically, once I've cleared either Jirachi from his team or Fortress, maybe not even Fortress, once Jirachi's gone, Power Gem is extremely spammable against his team. Um, so is Sludge Wave. Um, if he doesn't have Fortress and he has Jirachi, Jirachi's gone, I can spam Sludge Wave button. Um, as you can see, I have clear smog. This is my way of dealing with any Suicune. If it is, um, if it's substitute, I'm thinking he won't have recovery. If it's not, then I will outspeed with this thing. Um, and clear smog and school will probably not do much to me because Nihilek is actually really bulky. And then obviously I can play around it, switch in and out. So this is like my pseudo answer to uh, Carmine Suicune. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Foul, oh sorry, foul play is there for the. Um, Salamence and the Jirachi, because otherwise Jirachi gets a really, a really good switch in against my Nihilego. But I think if he's an offensive Jirachi, um, foul play is potentially like a two hit KO. Uh, even if he's Scarfed, obviously I outspeed him because I am Scarfed myself. Um, obviously I wouldn't be staying in potentially, but it's also a really good way of checking his um, setup on his Salamence. If I'm not sure if he's Charty Berry, if he's not Charty Berry, then obviously I'll be clicking Power Gem because after Self Rocks, that thing does just die to it which is great so that's Nihilego quite sort of easy to understand I feel next up is my Amoongus also known as a fun guy um, again a pretty self-explanatory set um, I decided to bring Giga Drain just for a bit of extra recovery because as you can see I'm not running Synthesis um, foul play again because Jirachi is an incredibly uh, good switch into this thing as a Salamence and I think that'll do half or so to each. Um, and obviously if Salamence comes in after rocks, that's great. Um, he might then try and set up on me. If not, I can let this thing die. That's fine. Um, Spore is really interesting because I don't think he would be switching Superior in on me. Because one, if he's Leech Seed, he can't Leech Seed me. Two, he would lose the one-on-one, -on -one, I feel. Because obviously Sludge Bomb would do a huge amount. Um, I think he'd probably have to get to plus four with two Leaf Storms, so he has to hit two Leaf Storms and then probably try and do as much damage with like, Hidden Power Fire as possible. Because um, I expect Leaf Storm and Hidden Power Fire would be his attacking moves if he bought any, because um, it does deal with my team okay. Um, but Spore's really nice, it can mess up his switches, that, you know, uh, this is his best opportunity to set up with Salamence or Thunderous if he does bring it, or Jirachi. Um, so Spore is something really nice, and Sludge Bomb is there just for the superior if he does decide to bring it. He's not, but I need a contingency plan in case he does start and get out of hand and I do somehow lose my Celesteela. Um, but yeah, I, I, quite an easy set. I mean, I have Regenerator and Black Sludge as, as sort of healing. Um, I don't have my Regenerator Core this week. I only have for him as, on his own. I don't have Slowbro or Adino. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much his job. He's just here to be, I mean, I have switch into Thunderous really. While I know Thunderous gets Psychic, I can take a Thunderbolt and then a Psychic um, without a Nasty Plot up. 
if he's nasty block, then it just... I sack it and I have to go into Nihilego at that point. Unless, obviously, it's agility, then I cry. Um, it deals with Suicune, okay? I was very close to running Seed Bomb on this thing. Um, but I think a max defense... Well, I would have had to put attack investment in it or something to break uh, subs on Suicune, I believe. Maybe? Or am I making that up? I was very close, but I thought, actually, if he burns me with school, then I am truly buggered anyway. Um, not thinking about Ice Beam, of course, or Extra Sensory. Um, but yeah, it also kind of checks the Fortress. It's another thing that kind of checks the Mian Shao, potentially. Uh, Mega Rodino, I can check as well, depending on its moves. Um, it's just a solid one, really, in this matchup, to be honest. There's lots of things in this team which kind of screw it, but there's also things which this thing stops. And with the rest of my team, I think it, it works quite well. So, I know I'm going on, so I'll try and speed this up a bit. Penultimate mom for the team this week is Celestila. It's it's exactly the same set as I bought last week against Dark Devil. Um, hopefully no flinches this time. Um, but the only thing different is the EVs. Like, again, um, Celestila's broken because it can leech seed anything it wants. Obviously, grass types it can't, but it's a flying type. When are you going to bring your grass type in against the Celestila? Um, and I will kill fire types with air slash and flamethrower and they will not be able to kill me because I'm a steel and flying type um, Unless it's Rotom Mo. That's literally the only thing I can think that might have a chance as a grass type um, Again, Brandon Doesn't actually have a lot to deal with Celesteela other than Incineroar and Thunderous. It, I'm expecting both of them to come but Anything else that he has in, Celestia can pretty much come in. Like, max attack Scarf Jirachi, I think Thunder Punch does a maximum of like 30%. And I have, uh, no, sorry, I don't have Protect this week. Um, I have, can Leech Seed up and get like half of that back. So what's the point in keeping a Jirachi in? Yes, he can try and Iron Head Stormy, but if he does do that, there will be a time where I won't get flinched and I will get to substitute. Um, and at that point, it's a Celestina behind a substitute that spams Leech Seed and just recovers itself. And it rinses and repeats because it's a fat mon and I absolutely love it. Um, the EVs are for a reason, but I can't really remember. I think it's because it lets me live a Scald or something behind a sub at plus one against, excuse me, Suicune. Um, I've got it so... I, I, my defensible beast boost, pretty much. Um, because he's got a lot of scary physical threats in Incineroar and Salamence. Again, Salamence can't really do too much to me unless it's playing for a Firefang. won't do much unless he's at like plus two and Z Firefangs. I think that might be enough to take me out. Um, but Thunderous is the main threat, I think, on this thing. Um, because the Thunderbolt is probably the only thing that can one-hit KO me. I don't even think a Flare Blitz unless he's Choice Band Adamant Incineroar will kill me. That's how gross Celestia is. Um, so that's pretty much my Celestia set. It's not the most exciting, I know that, but hey, it's something I feel could really benefit me this game. And then finally, we have got Fluffball coming back. Yes, uh, sadly, Fluffball didn't come week two and we lost to, to Hacks. Um, but Fluffball is my dedicated answer to Incineroar because it resists both stabs. The only thing Incineroar gets to hit me is Iron Head. If he's choice, then that's fine, because that gives me a free switch into my land... Well, not even my Lando, necessarily. My Celesteela, mainly. If it's not choice, then we'll be doing too much, and that thing will not take a hyper voice well, because of its dark typing. And if I have Stealth Rocks up, it's 25% off it. Anyway, um, so you can see 244 EVs, because in case I'm not Mega Evolved for Stealth Rocks, I want to be keeping as much HP as possible. Um, 196 in defense, it was for a reason. Again, I do not entirely remember. I think it was for Iron Heads. Um, but I think I must have got my calcs wrong in prep. Um, 44 in speed because I'm outspeeding. What am I outspeeding? I am outspeeding something. It's very deliberate that I put 44 in there and I cannot remember what for. It might be Suicune without investment. I think that is what it is. Um, because I am running... Uh, you can see, and then I'm modest because I actually don't need to be bold. And the extra bit of damage with Pixelate Hyper Voice is actually really nice for me this week. As we've already stated, he doesn't have much with fairy types. What he does have is Jirachi and Fortress, and I have Flamethrower's coverage. So if I get any predictions correctly, that's a nice 50% off Jirachi potentially, and a dead Fortress pretty much. If he gets hit by rocks, sturdy is you know ignored. Fun times I had. Um, Bruce is there because he really hasn't got much to kill me. Um, and let's see, I don't think he'll bring Sludge Wave at all on Thunderous because I have so many Poison-type switch-ins. 
Um, obviously I've got the Nihilego, I've got the Celesteela which is immune, and I've got the uh, Moongus which is neutral but is fat, and Landorus as well. Um, I think he'd bring Thunderbolt, Psychic, and potentially different coverage, HP something, HP Ice maybe, for the Landorus, um, with Nasty Plot. But this thing's like my dedicated chip, but it actually can do some really nice chip damage. He hasn't got a good hyper voice switch, and I think even an offensive draught, she takes about 20% from it. Ironhead can't kill me, but obviously the chances are he will flinch me. Um, but every time he doesn't have Jirachi in, I can pretty much get a free roost and just keep this thing going. So um, that's pretty much the team for this week. I appreciate I've talked for 20 minutes, so apologies. Um, but for now, we will just jump straight into the battle. Okay, guys, so we are here in the, the uh, showdown replay of our game. Game. As you can see, Brandon did decide to in fact bring the Thunderous, which is expected, Suicune, which was definitely expected, the Jirachi, which 100% had to come, the Incineroar, which I knew had to come. Um, the Enshaw was something, I guess. I'm not sure if it was his best bring. I think Fortress may have been better, because hazards against my team might be quite nice. Um, but the Enshaw is there. It could do some damage to some things, but I think my team pretty well built for it. And the Mega Rondino, which... I wasn't too entirely sure it would be coming because I thought I had enough ways of dealing with it and luckily I have Celesteela and uh, Nihilego. Obviously he doesn't know I don't have Heavy Slam but I, I find it kind of dubious that he did bring it. Um, so the last two I'm not too sure about, the first four I was definitely expecting those. Um, saying that I honestly don't know what he would have bought over me and Shao. Maybe the Salamence um, could still do some work but I do think I had some ways of dealing with it pretty well. Um, but I'm feeling pretty confident in this matchup. Once Incineroar goes down, I'm going to be quite happy. The reason is because the Ordino is it's Mega Ordino, by the way, because obviously I have Normal Ordino. Wish I bought Normal Ordino. Didn't ever really plan on bringing it, to be honest. Um, I uh, The Ordino, when it comes in, depending on its move pool, Celesteela could be the freest switch of my life. So could Nihilego. Um, Rabombi could also potentially sit up on it. Because it's so passive. Uh, if he lets me get a free quick dance up, I outspeed all his team, regardless if they're scarfed or not, and I will do a massive amount of damage and probably won't die because, like, he, I think he's got three physical attackers in Jirachi, uh, Incineroar, and the Mien Shao, and then three special attackers in Thunder Suicune and the Ordino. I think Ordino is especially defensive, looking sort of a team preview. Um, just for my special hitters, because I do think I think I have better heart special hitters than I do physical hitters. Um, and Suicune's probably his other bulk. It could be Jirachi. Jirachi is his only rocker, so that must be his rocker. Um, and I think I may predict his Jirachi to be his lead. So let's just get into the game. Um, I've also remembered to flip side, so I'm actually on the right side this time. Um, but we're going to play it on slow, so I can talk over my plays as we go along. So, um, I do decide to lead with my Altaria, and he leads with his Jirachi. Now, the reason I lead with Altaria here is, and I'm happy to Mega Roll, is because I want to get my Mega off. Because that then lets me have my answer to Incineroar. Um, he does flinch me, I stay in and click Roost, thinking, okay, I can scout. And if I do get the Roost off, I've pretty much not lost anything. Um, knowing he's going to keep clicking Iron Head, I'm going to go into Celesteela. And the fun with Celesteela begins, because as he doesn't have Superior, I'm able to click uh, Substitute, I believe, here. Yes, I am, because I know this Jirachi can't break my sub unless he has Thunder Punch. And because he's faster, that's fine. He sets up rocks here, he clicks U-Turn. So, to me, this indicates he doesn't have anything to hit my Celesteela. So we've seen U-Turn, we've seen Iron Head. If he had Thunder Punch, he would have probably stayed in and clicked it, because he'd need to break my sub. Um, but because he hasn't, I'm now a Celesteela behind a Substitute, and I get to do the boring Celesteela thing and click Leech Seed. Now if I was some setup variant, I might have actually had a really good chance here of just like setting up and killing his team. Um, but he does Mega Evolve here. Very questionable, um, sort of thinking about it. If I had Heavy Slam, this thing's gone. Um, but he stays in and clicks Fire Blast. Uh, I do have Air Slash because it kind of deals with his team overall with uh, Flamethrower a lot better than just having Heavy Slam. I'm actually gonna go into Fluff Ball because I expect he's gonna, he can't click a Fairy move, he has to click a Fire move. Um, and I do get Leech Seed Recovery. Now for me, again, um, I, it's a safe turn for me to click Roost because I will take Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it does like 50%, I think, um, but it's a good scouting opportunity. He does go into a Suicune here. Now, I'm going to kick Hyper Voice because if he sub, um, I know I'm going to Speed Creep, and this is where the Speed Creep came in really crucial for me, actually. I get the Hyper Voice off, and he clicks Sub. So I now know that Hyper Voice is about 35%. Um, if he's Calm Mind, 
I know I can two-shot him at this point. Um, because I will get damage off three hits, can't mind. He has to rest, and if he rests, if he's not. We, we know he has leftovers, so he's not resto chest though. So he has to be sleep talk if he wants to pull off uh, calm minds like that while he's asleep. So I know I can pretty much free hit or four hit KO this thing. I should win the fight. Um, and obviously High Voice does go through the sub, which is fantastic. I think Brandon may have forgotten about that, and Jack, while helping him, may have forgotten about this in team prep. So. Um, Mega Altari is looking very nice right now in this situation, because even when it's not set up, Ice Beam are going to be doing too much. But I speed the whole process up and get a crit with Hyper Voice. So, I think in the long run it didn't matter, but in the short run it made things a lot quicker. This does give a free switch back into Jirachi, but I know that... Uh, well, I should have probably gone to Celestina, knowing it's my best answer to this, because I haven't seen uh, Ice Punch yet. Um, I do get an Intimidate off, and I, he does U-turn on me, um, and now he goes into Mian Xiao. Now, I know here that the only thing this Mian Xiao is going to do is have hidden power. He could be potentially bluffing it, baiting in a, a, an earthquake, giving him a free switch into Thunderous. Um, he does click hidden power, I am Yachi Berry, and that does like nothing to me. So I think I would live that even without the Yachi Berry. But I click Stone Edge. It takes it quite well. But I'm now going to switch into Amoongus because Amoongus' like, importance has just dropped way down at this point. I know he's going to have ice, it's hidden power ice, but it's going to do nothing because Amoongus is fat. And uh, I think we actually find out at this point he is Choice Scarfed. And um, because I know he doesn't have a Grass type, I'm going to click Sport for free. It's my best move in case he goes into something that can start setting up. He goes into the Ordino here, and I'm going to make the switch into the Celesteela. Um, I think I'm going to... Do I double or do I click Sub? No, I click Leech Seed here, expecting him to click Wish. What he actually does is click Heal Bell. So we know he has Heal Bell, he has Fire Blast. Um, I don't think I'm going to stay in here. I believe I'm going to switch. No, I do stay and I click Substitute. Because I'm forcing him to attack me by clicking Substitute. Because um, all I have to do is click clicking Substitute until he clicks Wish. And then I can heal myself all the way up and wear him down and give me an eventual free switch. So I think this turn is where he clicks Wish. So we've seen Wish, Heal Bell, Fire Blast. At this point... If he has Protect, Nihilego can come in for free on this thing. If he has something like Toxic, Nihilego comes in for free. Um, we do go for Double Leech Seed here, because I expect him to try and pass that into something like uh, Incineroar. Uh, or the uh, Thunderous. I don't actually have Rocks up at this point, but I'm going to go into Landorus, because I think he's going to either... I think I should live a Fire Blast, and I think that if he wishes here, it gives me a free switch. I do get my Leech Seed Recovery. I'm going to click uh, Stealth Rocks. This is where he reveals Toxic to me. So now I know Nihilego is a free switch into this thing. Because uh, from the calcs, I know Fire Blast does a nice 8% to me. So this is where he switches into the Thunderous this time. And I click Earthquake. So it's a really nice read on uh, Brandon's behalf there. I'm pretty sure this thing's going to have Hidden Power Ice. Don't want to mess around. I don't mind losing Landorus at this point. So no 6 0, which is. This is upsetting because I feel like with the team I have, I could do the work to him. But I know I can live Thunderbolt. Uh, I know I can live Psycho at this point, and because um, he's woken up his Jirachi, I can now freely spore this Thunderous, which is awesome. Now, I'm going to play a bit of a Hacks game here. I'm hoping I can sleep him, or, you know, he can, I can outsleep him. I click the Foul Play here because I expect him to go into Jirachi, expecting a Sludge Bomb or a Giga Drain. It's a free switch. But um, I'm pretty confident he's going to leave this thing in, trying to wake up. Um, I think also at this point I might live another Psychic. Um, but I do click Sludge Bomb. He's now at a point where I can click Giga Drain as well. Um, just to get a bit of extra health, which I do do. So I've revealed all my moves to him now just by killing this thing. Um, but I do kill it with Amoogus, which is very interesting. But his Thunderous is gone. So he's really struggling to kill Celesteela now. And he brings in Incineroar. So I debate... I think here I debated whether, whether I should leave uh, Amoongus in. Because I think I will... Obviously the Flare Blitz damage would be really nice. But I do still have my uh, Altaria a really high amount of health. Um, and it is my switch in, and I had to play for differential in this league, so I am going to switch out and go into my Mega Altaria. Now what Brandon does here is he clicks Will-O-Wisp, which makes me think he might be a bulkier set, which would surprise me, but actually it turns out he is Choice Scarf. Now I click Willow thinking I would go into this, but he completely forgot I had Hyper Voice earlier. Um, I think this turn I do click the Flamethrower because the Jirachi switch is incredibly obvious, and I do a nice 53%, which does confirm he is on the more offensive side. Um, I could have lived an Iron Head there, but I don't want to risk the flinch chance. I know he can't touch me with Celesteela. Um, well, I don't know, um, 
but I think his last move was also toxic on this. But he's clicking Iron Head constantly the only way he can beat me one on ones if he flinches me to death. Um, he's doing 6% to me, I think, after leftovers, so he literally has to flinch me about 12 or 13 times in a row. Which is possible with Jirachi, but there will be a turn where I eventually get a substitute off against this thing. If I get Leaf Seed off on it, I think I beat it one on one anyway. Um, but as soon as I get a substitute, I basically take something down on his team. Um, he does, I think it's this turn where I actually do break through the, the flinch. Finally, he got like four or five in a row, um, and you get the sub off. Now, I think three Iron Heads is enough to break it. So there's one. I get my Leech Seed off. Fantastic. I could have killed it with Flamethrower, but at this point, I know that if Celesteel has enough health, it just beats his team, other than the Incineroar. Um, he does go for a second Iron Head. Um, he's kind of being forced to break my sub, so Incineroar can come in. Otherwise, he has to sack something else off. Um, and the Leech Seed and Leftovers has put me back up to two thirds when I was down to a quarter when I first put my sub up. Here he Healing Wishes, which is nice. I don't get any Leech Seed Recovery. I think here I click Substitute because I knew another Iron Head would break me. So uh, that was the safe play, really. Um, but he does now go into the Incineroar. I think um, this is the turn where he reveals Flare Blitz to me. Because I'm behind a sub, I might as well go for a free attack. I might Do I go for Leech Seed? I do go for Leech Seed because I now know that if I go into my Altaria, I get free recovery. Um, I believe that I can actually live a Flare Blitz here, so I do stay in. And I do click uh, Substitute because I expected him to actually switch out here. Um, God plays, I know, and I think it might have been questionable at the time, but I was in such a good position. I don't think it would have mattered too much. Um, but this thing has to click High Jump Kick to break my sub. I do hit the air slash, which is awesome. Now I have the defense boost, and um, I think this is where I think I uh, sort of miscalc at some point. With the plus one, I can live without it. I'm not entirely sure I'd live. There may have been a roll where I could have, but he can't kill me. And I do actually kill this thing off with an air slash too. All he's got left is Mega Rodino, and we know his only offensive move is Fire, uh, fire Blast. There's no point in me staying in because I will lose the fight one on one. So I'm going to go into Nihilego because this is where we see the Fire Blast do a lovely 8% to Nihilego. And um, this thing is incredibly fat. It's at 62% and it takes 52% um, from a Stab Sludge Wave from like base 127 special attack. That's, that's pretty nice. But the Poison, like we know he doesn't have Protect so the Poison really didn't matter. It just sped the battle up by a turn. So that was the game against Portsmouth. We do get the 5-0 win which was awesome for me in terms of knowing that last week I deserved to win the game and got robbed by a flinch and other numerous amounts of hacks in the game. Um, this week, I would say it's relatively hacks free. The hacks was definitely my favor, but ultimately in the outcome of the game, I don't think it mattered. Um, but again, a good game, Brandon. Sorry that it, you know, maybe wasn't as offensive as you like to play. I think it's just the way my team works out. I managed to chip down through the things that were scary and then just broke through the rest with Celesteela. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure guys that you check out his uh, Twitter and YouTube below. Like I said, we've got a co-op going on there. It's a very casual co-op, but there is a co-op on there. Um, he does have, obviously have the NSTL video. I will get English out of me. NSTL videos. Um, he also has this really cool series for team builders where he builds in-game teams. Um, I think I feature in one with... Delphox? Question mark? Um, for X and Y team builds, so I uh, recommend you check out that series too. Um, obviously make sure you check out all the other coaches in the NSTL for their games too. Um, but otherwise I don't have much else to add, so I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And I'll see you next week for my week 4 game against Trogaholic and a team which I can't remember the names of. See you later, bye!